Hello everybody, my name is Dr Ellie Atkins and I'm a paediatric clinical psychologist working at uh, in paediatric intensive care and in the neonatal unit at St George's Hospital in London in the UK. And I'm going to be talking to you today about managing stress. This is one of a series of webinars that we're running about staff wellbeing. So I'm going to share my screen for you. So today's webinar is called Managing Stress and it's thinking about the impact of the work on us and, and how we, what we could do about that. So let's first understand what stress is. I really like this analogy, the idea that stress is like a bucket, that we all have a bucket inside us. And sometimes our bucket is getting filled up and it's getting filled up with things from work and it's getting things filled up with things from our families, with things from our everyday life. So if we use the pandemic as a, an example of this, um, we were at, at work facing um, the, um, the idea that we were going to be getting more and more patients in. We might have been redeployed to different teams or other staff members in our team might have been redeployed. We might have um, been facing uh, additional worries and anxieties from parents of our patients because they were worried about the virus. And then in our home lives, we might have been having to queue for food or we might have been having to self-isolate and stay at home. Uh, we might have not been able to go out. We might have not been able to see the people who are around us. Perhaps we couldn't have the childcare if we've got children that we would have had. So uh, we see that all of these things are going into our buckets all the time and they start to fill our buckets up. And our buckets get fuller and fuller. Um, and then what happens is our buckets spill over. And, and this idea that they're getting fuller and fuller is, is the impact of stress. And when we're really stressed, uh, then what we know is that cortisol is coursing around us and the impact of cortisol is these things. So cortisol is quite helpful. Um, it's one of those inbuilt emergency mechanisms that helps us to manage in a crisis. So that's great. It increases our blood pressure, decreases our sensitivity to pain. Um, it increases our blood sugar. These are the kind of let's cope with a critical um, danger to us. But if we're functioning at a, a high level of stress, if our bucket is getting full quite a lot of the time, we've got a lot of cortisol going around us. Some of those things um, stop being so useful. For example, suppression of the immune system at a time when we're having um, a, a life-threatening virus around can really feel quite frightening. Um, decreasing serotonin, that's the kind of happy chemical, so we're not feeling so great. Um, and while we might have heightened memory and attention for the, the issue that's right in front of us, remembering all the other things we've got to think about might feel too difficult. So for me, in the middle of the crisis, I found it really difficult to think about cooking for my family. Normally, I cook for my family every night, and I just found that the thinking about what ingredients we had in the fridge, whether I needed to go shopping, how I could make a meal out of that, who liked what, was just too much processing. Luckily, I have a lovely husband who managed to step into the breach and do most of the cooking for us. Um, but that was, I was focused so much on work and I was really engaged in the work that I was doing. I wasn't able to think about um, what was going on uh, in other areas. And specifically for me, it was cooking that I just found, I just didn't have the headspace for. So we've got all these things going on for us uh, when we're really stressed. Uh, and let's think a little bit more about what that, that impacts on us. So we know that some stress is not that bad. It's not something we should really worry about that much. Actually, a little bit of stress is quite normal. Um, if it's brief and mild to moderate, it can really help us, it can spur us on. If you think about when you were a student, perhaps, and you had an essay that had to be handed in, a little bit of stress, I've got to get this in, I'm gonna get in trouble, actually helped us to get the essay in on time, even if we had to stay up a bit later than we normally would have done. So sometimes stress can be positive. Um, it also might be a little bit of stress might make us do something we feel a bit nervous about. So say um, uh, making a phone call that we didn't really want to make, but we did need to. Sometimes the positive stress can help us and has positive outcomes. And then we get to the next level, which is tolerable stress. So this is stress that's a bit more than normal and involves a greater magnitude of adversity or threat. Um, and we're able to tolerate it, but it's not something we're a position we'd like to be at all of the time. Then we get to toxic stress, and this is kind of strong, frequent or prolonged activation of our stress system. And I would argue that for some of our families on paediatric intensive care, uh, that the parents are experiencing toxic stress. To think that your child is sick enough that they might die 
and that maybe they're at that stage for a few days, that might become toxic stress. And uh, particularly for some of our long stayers, maybe our long term ventilation children uh, or on the neonatal unit, some of the babies born very early who are in hospital for a long time. Those families are in that for a long time. But we are too. There are times when we are experiencing this high, high level of our stress response, like loads of cortisol going through us. And the impact on that can be quite negative. And we know for children that toxic stress um, can involve, uh, can uh, occur when they're not being buffered by adults. And what that means is that we, we talk about children having a smaller stress bucket than the buckets that adults have. And when children are stressed, they tip a bit into their adult's bucket. And we see this all the time. We see when they come and they say, oh, I just fell over. And the adult goes, oh dear. And they take a bit of the stress of the child into their bucket. If a child is stressed and they're not able to tip out and they've got this smaller bucket, they're going to get to toxic stress quicker. So the, the, the support that adults give them, and we do this as staff on intensive care for a child who's awake, we're trying to buffer them by talking to them, by supporting them, by getting their parents and encouraging their parents to stay, maybe by finding strategies to communicate. Those are the ways that we buffer children when they're awake in critical care, because otherwise it might be quite stressful for them. So if your bucket is feeling quite full, um, and it may be, then these are some things that might be helpful. So the first thing is to notice. Notice when your bucket gets full. Think about what level am I at? Oh, that thing just tipped in a whole load. Or maybe it's just gone up a little bit, but I haven't got much capacity before my bucket is going to spill over. Um, and then take a breath. It's one of the little things that helps empty a little bit out of our bucket. We talk about putting a tap on the bucket so that we can control how we're letting it out. Rather than letting it all flood out, we put a tap on the bucket and we let it out. Just taking a breath is one of those things. Find a moment to pause when you can. If your stress is getting high, just pause. Just take a second while you're at the cupboard. Just take a second while you're in the loo. Just take a second while you're on your break, just to think about it and bring yourself down. Now we know that exercise disperses cortisol and produces endorphins. So if you can build exercise into your day, it might be walking the length of your hospital corridor. If it's anything like our hospital, it's quite a big campus. You know, just walk, maybe walk around. We've got a perimeter road, walk around the perimeter. It might be walking to or from work if that's possible, or it might be doing some exercise outside of work. Set boundaries for yourself. If you're working at home or you're working more flexibly or if you're working extra shifts, it's possible that you can cram in more work than before. I knew of people who were working um, their normal job in the week and then doing extra shifts on the COVID wards at weekends. Um, think about how you look after yourself. Don't work every hour. So take the time for yourself, take the time for your family, um, take the time to do other things. And don't feel guilty about that. That's part of you being a responsible healthcare worker. Remind yourself of the other times when you've coped with stress. So think about times maybe when you were doing your exams, maybe when you were a student, maybe you had a difficult boss. When have you coped with stress in the past? Um, maybe simultaneously you were trying to ma manage exams and working, as is the case for, for lots of doctors. Um, remind yourself how you coped with that and tell yourself this won't last forever find something to look forward to on the other side of this pandemic we don't know when that will be and that uncertainty is really tricky and might add to our stress but there will be a time when we're in a different place to the place we're in now where it won't feel as stressful as it feels now and letting yourself know that and having hope for the future is really important so this is the fifth uh, of our mini webinars please do look out for the other ones and please do email us with any questions we're hoping to run uh, an interactive session at the end of our run of webinars and we'd be really interested to hear what's important to you so thank you very much for listening um, we appreciate you being there and i hope that you can find ways to think about your stress bucket and think about how you might empty it out and the ways in which you might do that safely maybe by putting your tap on and finding some strategies that let it go so take care everybody Bye bye